All right, it's seven o'clock. So let's get started. I would like to welcome you to our webinar. Thanks for joining us um, on our Thursdays with Terry. As a women's national team coach, Terry Steiner joins us and walks us through training while dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. However, before we get started, I'd like to thank Ambit Energy and Team USA Energy for making this possible. And while I'm at it, I want to remind people that Frank, uh, Coach Frank Bumgardner, right there up in there in the corner, he's here to monitor questions. If you have a question, please type it in the chat box. It's right down there at the bottom. Okay, right there, there's a chat box. If you don't know how this works, uh, type it in. We will try to get as many questions as we can. So, we are extremely excited, not only to have Coach Steiner here, but we are really excited to have our first ever women's Olympic gold medalist. She's a two-time world champion on top of it, uh, Helen Morales. Helen, great to see you. Hi, Alex. Terry, nice to see you too. Hey, Alex. Yeah, so uh, real excited to have you here. Helen, let, let me... Uh, you know, normally I start with Terry, but I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I just I, I I'm uh, I'm excited to have you because I I've known you quite a while, and I just want to say you were it was a, such a blessing for us. Anybody that's been involved with women's wrestling that you. You were such a fantastic Olympic champion for us, Helen. So proud of you. Uh, just a quick, quick uh, recap for anybody that might have missed it. What a feeling! What a walk us through it. Oh man, yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think I have the words for it, but winning the Olympic gold medal was, you know, a dream come true, especially when it's a dream we've had since you know you've been a little kid which was the case for me um and I think growing up being you know an athlete and just de developing through the years I started to uh put winning the Olympics on this pedestal that like only superheroes could do it or you needed to be perfect and have all these you know magic powers uh so winning was such a beautiful moment for me because I remember my first thought was like, wow, normal people win the Olympics. Like there's no secret. This is so cool. So um, it was a beautiful experience and, and I had amazing people in my life that helped me get there. So yeah, I cannot put it into words, but yeah. yeah dream come well, true. I think, uh, I think your reaction at the end spoke millions of words. It touched a lot of people. It was it was terrific. It really was. And so, just get that out of the way. Congratulations with that. It Thank was you. fantastic. Well deserved. It was a a, a long battle and uh, good for you. So, you. Coach Steiner, where were we? Back to uh, you know we kind of we've we've gone through journaling. We've gone through uh. uh the importance of it. We've gone through mental uh, training, self-talk. Let's talk about, uh, unless you want to go back to that, the visualization, anything on that you want to touch before we move to your strength and uh, conditioning, how you're uh, dealing with that with the people? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, with strength and conditioning, you know, we're unfortunate, you know. And, the great thing about being a national team coach is you don't have to be an expert at everything, right? I mean, you have experts around you, right? And and so so we have a strength conditioning staff that works with our national team and, and really sets up their their programs according to, you know, whatever periodization we're in. And of course, this changes everything, right? Our, our whole, our entire year changed, you know, right before our eyes. And and so we're, we're back to the planning phases really of how, okay, so now move things back here. How do we start to get ready for 2021? And then, so today, actually we had a call to start to look at our periodization uh, of the competitions we think are coming ahead and, and how do we start to prepare for them once we get back 
on the mat. You know, most most athletes right now are off the competition mat. Or not, we're all off the competition mat, but most athletes are even off the training mat right now and focusing on the thing. You know, the, maybe strength training, maybe some conditioning aspects, but but um, we're still in the you know very early stages. So if you look at it like a high school season, you're you're probably looking at like where you are in August, September, right? Just a, a preseason type mode that we're in right now and trying to gain or, or keep a good level of fitness with the athletes and, and you know, focusing on maybe some nutrition and making sure our weight is in line, but really focusing on, you know, we're, we're right now we're focusing on what kind of intensity do we want? You know, do we want high intensity workouts? Do we want low intensity workouts or medium intensity? I mean, and, and probably what we talked about today a lot was it's probably a mixture of all three right now. You know, we're, we're spreading that out through the week and, and, and understanding that everyone has different um, things in front of them that they can use for conditioning. So really not getting so locked into to w what specifically we're doing, but giving them some guidelines on, you know, times and durations that we're looking at so we can at least, you know, work on all the energy energy uh, systems within our body and 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 still be, be gaining some strength and stuff like that so so that that's what we're, we're focusing on Helen anything to add to that anything what, what are you uh looking at you know as far as your calendar your peaks in your valley you know I mean and as a coach I forgot coach <laughs> Moral. okay <laughs> yeah that's that's new for me um no I think you know, just following uh, Coach Steiner's plan and, you know, we, we have those weekly meetings and then um, the people that, that train remote, we just kind of check in. So just been staying on that schedule. And then for me, um, it's just nice to have the time to just continue to heal injuries. And uh, I, I think just playing around with wrestling and, you know, sometimes when you're always preparing for something, it's about like, you know, okay, they do this, what do I do to beat them? And right now I'm like watching a film, you know, of a Russian wrestler and I'm like, oh, that looks cool. I want to learn that. Well, I have all this free time to try. <laughs> so, you know, just kind of having, having fun with wrestling again. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. Perfect. Having fun with wrestling. Uh, now let's, let's quickly branch it to the high school athlete who's missing their spring season, probably their Fargo season, probably their... So, you know, just to, they don't want to miss all that, but suggestions, either one of you, Helen first. Um, yeah, you know, I think, especially as high school athletes, you know, uh, sometimes it's just go, go, go. And, and you're used to having these seasons condensed into a short amount of time, you know, and it's like, the second you start season, it's all about winning state. The second you're done with states, it's all about winning Fargo. It's all about making a cadet team. And I think when you become a professional athlete, like when you at the senior level, it's like, okay, this is my career. This is what I know I'm going to do for like the next five years. And I know I do these tournaments monthly. It's like, because it's a full year round. Um, I don't know. I just noticed that the tensions are a little bit different. So I would say for high school athletes, just to relax and look at it more long-term, um, not just tournament to tournament or season to season, but realize like over time, over the years, uh, you know, there's so much to work on, on in this moment. And so spending any time being upset about missing out on something, it's like, if you can't define what that's going to add to your life, then, then don't, don't add it, you know? And, and I would just say, just try to change your mindset and just be positive and focus on the thing that are going well, whether it's time to heal, whether that's time to watch film, whether that's time with family, because, you know, eventually when you go back to, training and doing everything crazy you you know you don't have a lot of time with that like I moved away when I was 16 and I do family um so just little things like that just be present I guess sorry yeah no that's that's terrific I'm not sure we're we're getting a little scratchy uh uh signal so you're going in and out a little bit I'm not sure if it's us or if it's them it happens we deal with it here. It's uh, okay. this part of wrestling. Um, yeah. Terry, anything on that? Otherwise, um, I think Frank has a few questions uh, that are pretty good questions. You might want to throw those out to uh, see coming in for Helen. Yeah, I, I 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead to the questions. Yeah, so um, Taylor has this question and, and it goes for goes for both of you here and it's obviously a big one. You, get, you both talked about it already. Um, postponement of the game. Um, <laughs> no, Helen, you can, don't worry about the no, dog. I, I muted. For real life. <laughs> I told you a couple weeks ago, my daughter was singing Let It Go in the background. Yeah, don't worry about that. Um, so anyway, like, we postponed, I guess, what's your, what's your quick take on it? Sorry, my quick take on what? Postponement of the Olympic Games. Postponement? You know, um, unlike the NCAA athletes where it was like this instant thing, I think, uh, um, for us uh, athletes training for the Olympics, we kind of knew that there was talk about it. A lot of us athletes were involved in calls where we were discussing, you know, what's the right thing to do. So it didn't come as a surprise. And I think having that time to prepare for it and, you know, just being able to voice our concerns that it wasn't safe to have them this year. And, and that's proven true. So I was not upset about it. And I also think that, um, you know, I, I had injuries that kept me off the mat for the last two years. And I made a decision for myself that health always comes first. And even now in my training, like if I have something on schedule, it's always, you know, and I have, you know, something going on physically, like I, I won't ever push, uh, push the plan before my health. And so for me, I think I was just kind of used to that. So now it was just about, you know, wor the world's health and to come first. And so it just, it made sense to me as it did to all the athletes. And, um, you know, everyone's in different, different situations. So I can only speak for my own situation that, you know, I'm going to take this as an opportunity and, and just train really hard for the next year and get the job done then. Perfect. Interesting. Interesting. Terry, what'd you say? Or what, what do you yeah, I, mean, I think it's along the same lines, right? I mean, I, I think first and foremost, I think the athletes have handled it really well. I think it would be very hard to be in an athlete's shoes right now, right? And they're the ones that are getting ready and they, they put so much hype into the Olympic Games and making the Olympic team and things like that, that all of a sudden it's, it's, not pulled from you because it's but it's delayed and and so I think that initially there was some disappointment but I think because we saw other things coming we we were gearing ourselves for that right and the athletes could see it coming and and I think not none of us disagreed with that it was the right thing to do right I mean and you can talk about these you know you started hearing things well they can do it without the fans and all this well, that's not what sport is about, right? I mean, because it's not just the athletes that have, have put the time and the energy into this and these dreams and these, these you know, milestones, but also their families have, right? And, and coaches and families and, you know, so, much, so many support staff. And to have just the, the athletes out there competing and not do it without the fans and friends and family, it just nothing seemed right about it. So I think we're all... Um, grateful that they did what they did. They postponed it instead of canceled it because that was also a possibility. And I think that was probably the worst fear is that they would just cancel the games and, and not postpone them. So I think we're all grateful for the opportunity still yet ahead. And now we just need to adjust our plans, right? And, and it's really, you know, we learn this in the sport of wrestling to deal with adversity. That's hopefully one of the great things it teaches us other than how to win a championship, but how to deal with the adversities of life. And now we have to use it, you know, we have to use it off the mat and the athletes have to, you know, figure out ways to get through this and, and, and still be the best they can be. And, and so I think that, you know, it's just part of the training, really. It's part of the training and we just move forward with what we can control. Yeah. I like that you brought up dealing with, with adversity. Um, there's so many, so many high school athletes, college athletes, world and Olympic athletes. Talk about confidence. And um, I, I don't think people realize that even Helen, even on your highest moments, there are confidence issues. And there's uh, those struggles that people go through. And, you know, if you you can move that to your faith. Don't be afraid to talk about that, uh, but the confidence and, and how they deal, how students can deal with that. Well, let me, let me just set the stage a little bit here. And, and I don't, you know, I, I've talked about this with Helen before, 
and we've had conversation about it. Now I don't know if she likes me talking about it, but but I think it was such a deep, such a deep, such a defining moment in in who Helen is to this day. And and if we back if we back up a few years back to 2012, um, you know that was a very hard time, right? I mean Helen uh, went into the Olympic trials and was expected to make our Olympic team and, and um, you know she lost and and she just she wasn't the better person that day and and at the time it was devastating right I mean you, you think of those those moments like that that happen that you put all this time and energy into and all of a sudden it's not there anymore the opportunity isn't there anymore and and I remember uh, we were in training camp in Colorado Springs and we were getting the Olympic team ready and Helen of, of course was the number two person at that time and was in camp but very ha having a really hard time being there and I remember we went out at a run one day and and we were talking during the run and and she just said I just don't know I just don't know if I can put everything into it anymore I don't know if I can do that again and because I, I did it this time and and it didn't work out and and you know, I just reminded her that there are no guarantees, right? I mean, you're going to have to put everything into it if you want to do this, because that's the only way you can jump into this is all in. But that still doesn't mean there's a guarantee at the end, right? And, and that's why, you know, but that's what's going to make it great when it does happen, right? And, and you've, you've got to find a way to get through this time frame. And I, you know, I re I'm a firm believer that we all, we all hit those those low points in our, our lives or our careers and and we have a choice at that moment right to, to make to make changes and to do the right you know make the right decisions to move us forward or hold us back and and you know what was so you know the the picture you see when Helen did win the Olympics against Ushida when she's on the mat you know in tears I mean it was such a a precious moment um, because knowing the heartbreak she went through the four years previous, right? And and the amount of obstacles that she had to get through. And I think that so many times athletes think that young athletes think that, you know, Helen's an Olympic champion, everything's always been smooth for her, right? And, but to really know that the, the hard points that she did have, um, early in her career were the, were the points that made her. She needed that year. She needed that moment uh, to make her who she is today. And, and that's, that was, you know, at the time it seemed like an unanswered prayer, but it was exactly what was needed uh, to answer her prayer in, in 2016, right? And so, so that's, you know, just to set the table a little bit, uh, I'm not sure what Helen will talk about, but that was, you know, those are things that happen in careers that you can't explain why. I mean, it's not that she didn't deserve it in 2012. She deserved it then too, but it just wasn't, to, wasn't meant to be at that point. And, and then she just moved forward um, and, you know, made a lot of great decisions to change things up in her career and her training that, that made sense for her and to to bring her forward to a completely different level. So she went from, you know, I would say a better than average elite level wrestler in 2012 to all of a sudden, you know, leaving everyone behind her. You know, she was, she was uh, by far the best person on the mat. And, and I remember um, before the Olympic finals in 2016, um, she just had a, a real calmness about her and a peacefulness about her. And, 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 and I did too, as, as the head coach sitting back, I really, I knew it was time. I knew, I just knew I had this feeling that it's going to happen. And it didn't matter who it was against. And she ended up beating one of the greatest champions ever in our sport uh, to win that title. Um, but there was such a calmness because you knew that she was prepared and ready to win. Helen? Yeah, no, that was awesome. That was like such a great trip down memory lane as well. And it's a uh, it's cool. We talked about you know 2012 uh, a few days ago, uh, all of us. And and yeah, there there are a lot of a lot of good memories. I remember being 
super depressed and discouraged, but I can look back and I have done a lot too, just conversations with, with coaches and, you know, with the chiropractor, just all these people that just spoke into my life. So, um, you know, just, just pay attention to it. I, I have a couple things to say about confidence, but one, just to, to go off of what Terry said, um, I remember for a long time after I won 2016, the, the second after I won 2016 Olympics, I lost all my confidence. Um, because I couldn't tell you why I was a winner. I couldn't tell you why I deserved to be better. I, I didn't understand. I was like, well, wait, what, like, what is the secret? What do I have? What, what can I do so I can repeat this in 2020? And it was almost like, well, there was no, like Terry said, like there was no guarantee. And so I, I was like, oh man, like now I got to keep this up. And I felt like I was hiding behind armor and everyone was afraid of me. But if anyone would have touched the armor, it just would have crumbled. That's what it felt like for, for many, many years in sport. And, uh, um, and I, you know, I would say really in this last year uh, is when I've really just grown and, and matured and, and kind of found this new level of peace about that. And so what I want to say is that my journey from 2012 to 2016, that confidence also came from the group of people that, that I was around, whether that was having coaches to believe in, having an organization that supports you, having teammates that are with you day in and day out. And our minds were so focused on the same thing. And, and, you know, my teammate, Elena, I mean, I call her the Russian bear because she's just, you know, no doubt crosses her mind, you know, she's super steadfast. So for me, it was really helpful to be around someone like that. And I think sometimes it's good for us to, you know, just be careful about who, who we're being around because that can help our confidence. You know, if we're, if we're around someone that's really negative and um, you know, they say they have the goals, but they're not putting the work in, well, you know, whether you like it or not, that, that will affect you over time. And so, um, for me, I'm just very thankful that I was around people that really encouraged me and constantly told me that I could do this. And, and that helped a lot. And I think another thing too, personally, confidence, um, this is just my personal opinion. It's different for everyone. I won 2016 Olympics really without a, a lot of confidence. I just worked so hard and I was so laser focused and I just trusted. After 2012, I was like, it just, you know, to me, I was like, God, it doesn't make sense. Why would you give me all the work ethic? Why would you give me the talent, the skill? Why would you give me all these things? And then why did you give me this horrible mindset? You know, why did you make me weak-minded? Like, why would you do this to me? You know, I felt like he was, he was taunting me or smiting me. Like, I'm going to give you everything it takes to be an Olympic champion, except this mindset. So you can just suffer. You know, that's what it felt like. And I was angry at him after losing 2012. And I just kind of felt like what he spoke to me in my spirit was, I don't give everyone everything. No one's given everything. The area where you lack, that's your mountain to climb. And the area of your biggest battle is going to be the area of your biggest breakthrough. And I think one of the reasons I consider myself now very mentally strong in all areas of life, not just wrestling, is because I was really so weak-minded when I started off that I was like, I, I have to work on this. I, I, I have to figure this out because... Uh, otherwise I'm not, I'm not going to make it. And through that process, um, I think it's an individual journey and, and you'll figure out what works for you. And, you know, sports psych never worked for me, um, just because of anxiety. And I could talk myself out of a lot of things and, and it just didn't seem a good fit. And so I remember there's a verse in the new Testament where Paul says, you know, I put no hope in human confidence. You know, if anyone could have confidence, it would be me. I have all these things, but I don't put confidence in myself. And so I realized like, why, why do we need confidence? It's great, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't guarantee you a win. I've seen people that are super scared and they go out there and, you know, something just clicks, they get in the flow and win. I've seen people that have zero doubt they're going to lose and they go out there and they lose anyways. So, you know, it's always better, obviously, to believe in yourself rather than to not always say positive things toward yourself. But if you're, if you're having doubts, that's okay. You can still win with that you can win with or without confidence, you know, just really just don't get in your own way. Just let yourself keep going. Just let yourself flow. Just let yourself hit moves. I think sometimes we crumble because we put pressure on ourselves or we think, I don't, I feel nervous. I feel anxious. I don't feel confident right now. Therefore that means I'm going to lose. It's like, not necessarily go bring that anxiousness out there and see what happens. Just let, let yourself wrestle. And again, at the end of the day, um, pick a bigger goal than winning or losing, because I think that will also put confidence into perspective because when it's about about winning or losing you're trying to believe am i a winner am i good enough am i these outcome goals where for me i'm like man what i just like pursuing sport because i like what it teaches me about myself like that's my high that is my addiction it's really not winning it's like oh man god here's this crazy scary battle am i going to be focused today am i going to get things done am i going to choose the right things to do man i don't know but i hope so okay let's go let's journey on this adventure and that to me is is the funnest part about wrestling 
Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's that's terrific. Uh, Frank, you got a question there? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jay actually just commented, this is amazing, and I, I agree 100%. And he's got a question that just goes right with this, Helen. So here's the question. What are some of the ingredients for real growth or real breakthroughs? You mm -hmm. kind of touched on some of them there, but if you start wanting to pinpoint some of these ingredients that it takes to have real growth and break through those barriers, what would you say? Wow, that's a really great question. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is definitely a growth mindset. Um, and, you know, uh, if you've read, um, and Google will probably give a better definition than I am right now between a fixed mindset and growth mindset, but, you know, growth mindset is like just focusing on, on, on learning and, and growing where fixed mindset is like, I'm smart. I'm supposed to be able to do this. I can't do this because I don't, you know, it's, it's, I'm not explaining it well, but having a, a growth mindset is key. And I think, uh, just from what I've studied and, and from my own personal experience, like I love learning. I love learning about myself. I love growing. Um, you know, I, I love figuring out new things about wrestling about myself. So, uh, that's helped me tremendously in sport. And then, um, you said the, the question was, what are things sorry say it one more time because there's something yeah, there. so what are some of the ingredients ingredients for real growth or for real growth yeah okay so the other thing really i i think um attention well awareness so awareness and perspective and with that comes attention um if i'm just going about my day and i go to practice and i do what coach tells me to that's great i'll probably get better but i'm completely relying on like doing the moves my coach told me to do Whereas when I go in and I have an awareness and I'm paying attention to myself and like coaches, you know, they want me to do it this way. I'm, you know, I'm feeling tired today. I'm unmotivated. Okay. Why am I unmotivated? Is it because uh, I'm nervous about this match coming up? Yeah, it is. Okay. Let's just bring that to the table. All right. Well, why are you nervous? Because there's a lot of pressure on the Olympic champ and I feel like now I have to always win. Otherwise I'm failing. Yeah, well, that's a very real feeling. Let's acknowledge that. And then let's move forward. Okay, why do you do this again? Oh, because I love to wrestle. And do you want to let the pressure get to you because you're having these thoughts? No, not necessarily. So what's one thing you could do right now? Um, you know what, I'm just going to try and be in the moment, ask my coach questions about the move, talk to him after practice about my nerves, you know, just things like that. Like I'm constantly having conversations and again it's a personal thing everyone tells me that I overthink a lot and I I do so yeah, um, yeah, okay. I just I just call it overthinking more positively if I get more positive overthinking thoughts then yeah. I'm out positively thinking yeah positive. I'm positive you overthink too okay <laughs> so so but but again it's it's you know when we talk about growth like every person is an individual and for so long sports psych was like you think too much, just be in the moment, just relax, just think about that you're the best. I'm like, that doesn't work for me to just say like, oh, I'm the best. I'm like, well, no, you know, this girl's won 16 gold medals. How am I going to tell myself I'm the best? I feel like I'm lying to myself, you know, like I feel stupid saying that. And so it's like, well, you work the hardest. I'm like, no, not necessarily. I saw this Swedish girl, like the girl never stops wrestling. Like I can't outwork her. I've tried like, you know, what does this mean? And um, so, so for me that, that didn't work where it was more like I, work to find what works for me. I work to find my truths. And I think for growth, uh, I can't give you the answer for growth because I don't know you. This might not work for you at all, you know? And, and so I would say as athletes, just pursue the highest goal, which is just to develop yourself to the best version possible you can be because success will come it, on or off the mat. It, it will come and you will like the person that you are. And I think that's extremely important. And I think it's way better to win like the person that you are, like the character that you have. I mean, that you know that is so much more valuable than just like trying to figure out how to, how to you know fix things that you think are wrong with you that that really aren't yeah so that brings us right back to what uh coach steiner was talking about last week and that is self-talk mm -hmm. and visualization and that self-talk that you just demonstrated for us was phenomenal i mean it really was i mean people don't have those kind of conversations to that depth but they have to you need to it's important to uh it is 729 so frank if you're ready to uh to move on yeah so um like uh like alex was saying here in the beginning you know all of these webinars that we that we've done to this point plus the ones i'll talk about here in a second um they're all made possible by um by a partnership 
Um, so we want to make sure and acknowledge those that uh, have been able to put this together. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's get a word from our executive director, Rich Bender. It's Rich Bender here at USA Wrestling. We hope that everybody out there is staying safe and healthy. Thanks for taking the time to be on the webinar with Coach Steiner today. I hope the information he gives you will be helpful as we all deal with the pandemic and how we can keep focused and make the most of this time. A partnership with AMP Energy provides unique opportunities for USA Wrestling members to save money on their energy bills and possibly even generate funds for the wrestling program. If you want to learn more about how you can get involved, Coach Steiner will give you that information. Thanks again, and stay safe and healthy and focused. Hi, my name is Don Valley. I'm a recently retired wrestling coach. Uh, coached 40 years from the elementary to the high school level. As an assistant, as a head coach, I served 25 years with the Indiana State Wrestling Association, uh, 13 years as a kids director, five years as the vice chair of the organization, five as the women's director. About four years ago, Olympic coach Terry Steiner showed us uh, and introduced us uh, to AMA Energy and showed us how we could save a little bit of money on a gas bill we were already paying. And if we preferred 15 friends and family, we could possibly get it for free. In a short amount of time, we were able to do that. And for about three years now, we've been giving our gas supply for free. Since then, all right, we introduced an Amish guy to the same program. And he has a woodworking factory, and he was able to start saving money on the gas bill he was already paying. And since then, we preferred friends and family. And now he gets his gas for free. He just was really excited this week when he got his gas bill. It was $948.58 for the gas portion of the bill. And the energy sent him a check, right, for the exact same amount, $948.58. Right. And what's really great is the Penn Wrestling Club, where I was coaching at, gets a little piece of all those gas bills for all those friends and family that we recommended the savings to. So it's been quite amazing for us. Been quite amazing for my buddy who has a woodworking factory and quite amazing for the parents. So, like we said, we want to, uh, you know, we want to acknowledge those who've been able to put this together um, USA Wrestling, Ambit Energy, Team USA um, Energy as well. Um, you know, so this is our fourth installment of these uh, Thursdays with Terry. And um, we've got three more lined up right now. Um, May 14th, next Thursday, we're going to have um, men's national team coach Bill Zadik on. Um, talk about, you know, what the men's team might be doing during this time as well. Uh, May 21st, we're going to get a, uh, a strong opinion on something. We don't know what that <laughs> something is yet, but we're going to have Ben Askren on. Um, and then uh, May 28th, we're going um, to have Randy Couture. Um, for those of you who don't know, obviously an MMA star, you know, an actor, but he was also, um, he was also one heck of a, of a wrestler as well in his time. So, you know, as, uh, as Helen's been talking here and, and Coach Steiner has been for the last few weeks, you know, these lessons are not just wrestling specific, but these are about life and about how to be elite, how to be successful in life. Um, so that's what we've been able to, uh, you know, to try and hope provide not just the wrestling community, but everybody. So make sure you're sharing this with, um, you know, with everybody as well. So, um, very last thing, and then I'll let Alex get going again. Um, so as, uh, as Rich was saying, um, you know, Terry's got an opportunity to share a little bit more about Ambit Energy with you. Um, I will put in the chat a link to a, a Zoom webinar that we do every Monday and Wednesday um, at 7.30 Eastern time um, that we share much more in depth about what uh, that particular part of the, um, of the partnership is and, and how it could impact you personally as well as your wrestling program. Um, so I'll put that in the chat, but Alex, go right ahead. All right. Well, thanks a bunch, Frank. Thanks for doing that. When I was watching uh, Rich, I thought I was watching back in the 1980s, uh, a foreign movie, you know, Godzilla movie. Cause <laughs> it was a, Hey, how you doing there, pal? <laughs> okay. It was great. <laughs> it was great. So Helen, we have high schoolers out there. I know that you've traveled that path. Uh, a, a, a lot shorter time ago than the rest of us have. Um, nutrition. Mm. Yeah, I know that, that uh, weight, you, you came in with a philosophy when you were young. Uh, you, you, you have changed that philosophy, I believe, uh, in, in nutrition. I'd like you to just touch on that, you know, maybe uh, – Give some advice for the youngsters out there that might be listening or the coaches that might be watching. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, nutrition is a really important part, not even of just being an athlete, but of life, um, but especially for being an athlete. Uh, and I think when you're 14, 15, you can get away with like eating McDonald's and Cheez-Its or whatever and going to practice, but you don't as you get older. And even in high school, you do yourself such a disservice because uh, I, I, I like look back knowing what I know about nutrition and I'm like, man, I probably would have won states if I knew this. I was, you know, eating this way or, uh, especially because for me, when I had to cut weight for the 2016 Olympics, it was so strict dieting that that was the first time I had spent months and months just eating super clean. And I just felt like a machine. Like I had the energy, I had the endurance, I felt good. My head was clear in the morning. Um, so it was such an extreme difference. And, you know, if you look at, uh, the USA wrestling program, I mean, all the teams have nutritionists, everyone's working with someone, you know, everyone's getting input. And uh, it's kind of how uh, Coach Terry said, you know, um, there's different experts in all the all the fields. So um, there's a reason for that. You know, it's that important you, to have the strength training, the nutrition, the sports psych, the wrestling, you know, all those components go together. And, and I don't think that at the highest level, you'll find someone that's not doing one of those things. Hydration. Hydration is huge. Your body literally needs water to survive. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, because of my concussions, I just kind of learned about hydration and, and um, just how, how the body works when it's dehydrated, which is why I actually don't cut, cut weight anymore. Uh, is because I didn't want to risk anything with my, my brain. And, and honestly, it's just so crucial for so many bodily processes and just to have the energy uh, to do what you're doing. Um, it's so important to stay hydrated and you'll, you'll literally feel better. And uh, I think also what happens a lot of times with nutrition is that people are like, well, I'm already, you know, this many pounds overweight. And then if I change this nutrition or if I drink more water, I'm going to gain weight. And actually when you get on the right program, like you'll, you'll actually end up losing weight and it'll be easier. It's so much easier for me to sweat. Now I can sweat more in a practice than I did when I wasn't drinking that much water. So, um, you know, for people that are like checking the scale all the time, like multiple times a day or every single day, you know, you drink water and you freak out because a couple ounces makes you gain, um, you know, a little bit of weight, but really you have to take care of your body. Do you have a recommendation, a quick number, you know, a, a ballpark number? Yeah, I, I drink about a gallon a day. So I'll just like this right here is my like two liter bottle that says water and lemon. And it then, you know, this, like, you know, <laughs> so, so I drink, drink two of these a day and I do a huge water bottle because again, uh, I think Coach Steiner talked, someone mentioned it, but like as, as elite athletes, it's not like we're elite because everything's easy and we figured it out. It's still hard to do the right things. You just choose to do them and you make a habit to, to choose to do them. So I have a big water bottle because that way I can, you know, know for sure that I'm drinking that much water. But. Uh, that, that goes back to what we talked about with goal setting. I mean, goals don't need to be, I'm a national champ. Goal can be, I'm drinking two of these every day right and yeah. so you know you have that and that's that's uh that's important terry anything on that well no i i just you know think about the the path athletes take and it seems like so many times they they fight this part right they they think they can just do all the right things on the mat and they and everything else will fall into place and but there's always another level right someone is going to do it right and, and if you're not going to do it right, you're going to put yourself at a disadvantage, right? And, and so you, you see athletes time and again, and I've seen it where they, they fight this and they try to do it their own way. And then after really most of the time after they fail, right, that's when they start to self-reflect a little bit. How can I get better at this? And, then, and at that point, they start asking for help and start taking in the expert's knowledge, right? But but then once you have it, it's doing it, right? It's still, like Helen just said, you have to make a habit of doing it, right? And because we're all full of information that we don't use, right? <laughs> Every, uh, there's a lot of people that know that smoking is bad for you, but they still smoke, right? I mean, uh, we're, we're full of useless or information that we're never going to use or we never use, right? I mean, but 
you really have to put it to use, right? And if this is a, if this is what you want to do, if you want to be the Olympic champion, if you want to be the state champion, you know, there's a certain lifestyle to it, and and, and um, there's you know you can try to take the harder path, but you don't have to learn from your own mistakes, right? You can learn from other people's knowledge, and and you know that it's a lot easier path that way, and, and but. Uh, it just so happens to be that most of us, okay, want to try it our own way first, right? And, and most of the time we hit hard knocks all the time and until we start listening to someone else that, that's been around the block a few times. And, and we do that with a lot of aspects of our lives, right? And, and so just to hear, you know, I mean, and Helen is a perfect example, right? Of a, like, again, like after 2012, she made, she made a decision to jump back into this and made a decision to do it, but she was going to do it and, and do it the right way. Right. And make those changes that made sense for her. And, and that's, that was the biggest difference between the two. It was, it was maturity and a mature way to look at, at, at going through a wrestling career. Right. And, and but you know, we, we had to go through hard times first. Right. I'm going to do a commercial break right there, Terry, for any yeah. of the, Students that might be listening out there, did you hear what Coach just said? So don't be afraid to listen to your parents, okay? <laughs> We're trying to make it easier on you. Got it? All right? I just wanted to do that little infomercial, all right? <laughs> We're trying to make it easier on you. You don't have to learn by your mistakes. You can learn by our mistakes. All right. Sorry about that. Had to do it. Uh, Frank, I think it's uh, I think it's time for some questions. It's 7:41. Before we go on to questions, anything uh, we didn't touch on that you might want to talk about, Helen, uh, Coach? Uh, all right, Helen. I just have one really quick thing to say about nutrition as well. Um, mm -hmm. For me, before the 2016 Olympics, I felt like. Uh, I could make a sacrifice in anything, but the hardest sacrifice I had to make was eating boring food day in and day out. But I also felt like, well, if I make this, I believe that I'll win. And I do think I was hungry to win because I knew the sacrifices I made every day. However, um, after 2016, I just realized that it was so much focus on the diet part and I wanted to focus more on wrestling. And so what I've learned now, and especially in going up a weight class and, you know, fitting into that better is that, uh, nutrition doesn't have to be this miserable thing. You're not like, you know, eating chicken with nothing on it and starving and having a salad with no dressing. Like it, it can be fun. Uh, there's tons of reps, recipes online and I actually really enjoy what I eat. And even when I have a break after a tournament, I don't get too far off my diet because it's not a diet anymore. It's just a lifestyle. So I would say if you view nutrition as this punishment or this painful diet, one, it's going to suck a lot worse. And two, it's like, I think you'll go further in the sport when you have a, a healthy lifestyle of just eating clean. That's a great point because a happy wrestler is a long time wrestler. Mm -hmm. And that, that, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, yeah. uh, right, Coach so, Baumgartner, go ahead. Yeah, looking at some of the questions, we've got some really good ones tonight. Um, so, you know, it's, it's thought provoking when there's a lot of questions coming. Um, so, you know, kudos to both of you for, for having a good one tonight. Um, well, we'll see how they answer them. Okay. Right. But so far, it's been good. You know, uh, Helen and I have confidence in. Coach Steiner was a suspect, right? See, I had to <laughs> you a little. I mean, we've been missing this, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, from Mark, um, in terms of mindset, how do you reset your own goals when you've reached – the pinnacle of our sport. You talked about in 2012 how you, you were it was so difficult and you you had those doubts whether or not you even wanted to continue. And then in you know fast forward to 16, you achieve that ultimate goal, you reach the pinnacle. How do you reset? Yeah. You know it's funny. I remember in 2012 I was living at the training center and I think it was like the week of Olympic trials and uh, Terry gave us this speech and he kept sharing from his own personal experiences with wrestling and Olympic trials. And he said, just remember you, you don't need this. You want this. And there's a big difference. And I remember being in my head, like, yeah, whatever. You don't know anything about 
about my goals, you know? <laughs> and then I lost in 2012 and I realized like, oh, I, I felt like I didn't have anything. And, uh, I felt like I needed, I really did need to make, um, the Olympic team to, to feel a certain way about myself. And so, uh, I share that because, um, you know, in 2016, it, uh, I have a journal entry from the day before and I said, you know, all I've ever wanted, the reason why I came back in 2012, I told God, I'll give you four years of my life, four more years. Cause I mean, I told Terry, we had this talk, like, I was like, you, what do you do when you've given everything? And I was like, God, I already gave 110%. There's nothing more to give. And, um, he just kind of taught me, he's like, just do it my way. And it's not about giving in percentages. It's just about growing in areas. And so I said, okay, you have four years. And the only thing that I ask is that I want to walk away without regret. Like when this chapter is done, I want it to be done. I don't want to look back and, you know, just always have this resentment that I never made an Olympic team because that would mean like all my culmination of like sporting years and experiences would result in bitterness. And I was like, man, I don't want that. Uh, so for me, pursuing 2016 was I just didn't want to have regret. And after I won, um, I remember just feeling like, you know, it was this, uh, it was a stream come true. And, and so there was a period where I was like, well, what do I do now? And um, I don't think you, so the reason I shared this, because I don't think that you ever reach the pinnacle. Uh, I think when you make it a habit for you to want to reach new standards of excellence, there will always be a new pinnacle. You know, like people are like, well, we've already won Olympics. I'm like, well, I've never won a team title. I've never won the Olympics twice. I don't know what it's like to have a target on my back. And instead of looking at those as, you know, um, things I need, it's just new fun, fun things. And I think in sport, there will always be something fun to chase. Even if you're going for your second Olympic title or your third, it's going to be like, wow, and now I'm coaching or now I have a young teammate and they're pursuing this for the first time. There's like all these beautiful new experiences in it. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of my, my input on that. Well, yeah. And, and I would, and I would add right into it. I, I agree a hundred percent. And because, you know, it may look like you're doing the same thing again. You know, you're going back after another Olympic title, but the journey is going to be so different, right? There's so many variables in there. You're now, now you're an older athlete. Now you have different teammates around you. You have different opponents in front of you. There's different obstacles. Um, and, and, and your body's completely changing. So, so there, there's, there's always more obstacles, right? The, the journey, you can take the same, what you think is the same path and it's going to be a completely different experience, right? And you have to be willing to make the adjustments along the way or you'll, you know, you'll fall short from there because it's never the same. You can have basic concepts that are the same, but you're going to have to make adjustments within that. And really th that struggle, that, that strive for, the truth in there is is the fun part about it, right? That's that's the challenge. That's what gets us up every day, going again, and, and the curiosity in it, and how do we make this better? That's really, as a coach, and, and now as a coach, and, and formerly as an athlete, I mean, that, that's what drove you further, and, and it keeps driving you every day, is figuring out those obstacles along the way, and, and, and um, you know, and, and you have different athletes all the time. As a coach, you have, you have different athletes all the time. You're, you're constantly dealing with different, different issues, different obstacles, different opponents, and, and, all, and all those things um, just give such a different experience to, to the journey. Okay. That's so, great. Yeah. Um, so we've got a few others here. Uh, Natalie has said um, that she deals with uh, she deals with some nerves and anxiety around, um, you know, around the state tournament. So, um, Helen, what are some things that you've been able to implement to help your own anxiety and your, your nerves and your stress around competition? Yeah, so <clears throat> I actually, um, you know, have been diagnosed with anxiety, so it's not just like a sport performance thing and uh, a life thing. So I've, I've, dealt with that, um, in all assets, you know, in all areas of my life. So, uh, there's, you know, a bunch of tools and, and resources for that, but I would say one of the ways yeah. that it honestly helped me with sport is that for me, I just, for whatever reason, I, every match to me felt like the Olympics, every match to me kind of felt like it had meaning, you know, the world championships, any tournament I went to, I mean, 
you know, I was just real devastated if I didn't do well. And so I think just putting that, having that pressure on so often kind of almost like I just started getting used to it. So I think if you only have anxiety when a specific tournament is coming up, like the States, then you have to take a step back and look like, well, how come other matches I don't have this? And how come at States I have it? What is the meaning behind it? What is the fear behind it? Is it the fear that you've always wanted to and you don't know if you will get it? Is it now your the expectation is higher because of that it's States? And if there's other matches where you've wrestled without it, I think um, look back to those and, and just kind of figure out what you were doing then that made you calm. And if it's something like, oh, well, I wasn't expected to win so I had no pressure, or if it was like, oh, I was wrestling kids I wasn't as good as, so, you know, then you have to look at that, and you have to just say, like, okay, this is a battle that I'm going to have to take on and, and push through, so um, I think, you know, the fact that you're asking this question, that the fact that you, you are really seeking this answer lets me know that you're very invested in your sport, and that you want it really bad, so I would say with that, just take a step back and find a truth that you can hold on to when you compete that no one can take from you, so my truth for me is, um, I'm free from fear. That was the biggest thing. I never want to step on a mat and wrestle scared. You know, I don't want to lose to myself before I step on the mat. So I would always just say, you know, I'm free from fear. I'm free from fear. And, um, and for me saying that allowed me to go out and just have fun when I wrestled, whether it's a big match, big expectations, or just, a, you know, whatever match, um, just I'm free from fear. That's all I focused on. So when you other things like, Oh, this tournament's not that serious. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So that, that was like, essentially, I would say pick something like, um, I'm free from fear. I love what I do. I'm thankful I get to be in this moment. You know, when you say those things, um, there's not, there's not a, a counter argument to it. You know, there's no reason that you should be, shouldn't be free from fear. There's no one that can trap, you know, you can't be trapped into fear. It's a, it's an emotion. It's something that only you can feel, you know, you, you can't, you can call me stupid, but I won't feel stupid unless I choose to feel it. You know, I might be stupid, but I won't feel stupid. I have to choose to feel it. So with fear, I, and I'm nervous, you know, before every match I have it. Um, but there's certain things that I'm like, man, I know I'm free from it. I might feel it, but I know I'm, I'm declaring that I'm free from it. I'm going to walk in this freedom. I'm going to walk in joy. And I might have to say that to myself every two seconds. Every two seconds, I'll say that to myself. It's harder than my warm up, but <laughs> that's what allows me to go out and compete free from fear. Do you ever try to duplicate duplicate the feeling? Oh, so this is how you normally feel in a big championship match. Do you ever try to bring that back to the match you know you're going to dominate and try to work yourself up like that so you can get through those emotions? I or didn't intentionally. I didn't intentionally do it, but you know what's interesting, and. Uh, Terry, I don't, I don't know if you noticed this too. Um, at the 2016 Olympics, like I remember, because that was my first Olympic team, and I went, and all these guys and girls, everyone I had looked up to, these tough athletes that show no fear, and I don't, I don't care who you are. When you're at the Olympics, there is a level of tension and anxiety because everyone knows this is the one thing I get to do once every four years. It's all or nothing. So everyone has this layer of like anxiety and tension on them. I mean, it's like everyone's calm and they're confident, but there's just, it's not the same as the world championships. It's not the same as the trials. It is just different. And, um, and for me, I looked around and I was like, Oh, I look like this all the time. Like, <laughs> I have this stress all the time. <laughs> so I think I just, it was easier for me because I'm used to having to deal with a million thoughts and doubts and insecurities. And so what, when I was there, I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to lie to myself. I, I know that I have doubts and fear, but I'm just going to wrestle with them. Like, so do they. <laughs> so yeah, do they. No. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, let's see some of the others we had. Um, so Chelsea was asking, uh, she's going to be a senior next year. She's scared because she doesn't know what colleges are looking for. You got any quick advice for her? Um, I think maybe Terry might have a lot more advice on this. He knows a lot of the college programs, but um, I can just say this uh, because I went to one college in the U S and one in Canada. Um, I, I would say don't worry so much about what college colleges are looking for. I think it's kind of a mix between what you're looking for and what they're looking for. And generally a school, they're looking to find someone that, that fits with them and you're looking to find a school that fits with you. So, you know, take visits to schools and, you know, just, you know, 
um, you know, just be honest about, about your goals and your vision and, you know, you'll align yourself with programs that have those same things, you know, uh, hard work and, and, and doing your schoolwork and, and being diligent, all those things, you know, that comes with it. But uh, I remember when I did my recruiting trip to Simon Fraser University in Canada, you know, the coach Mike Jones was like, oh yeah, we don't have this, we don't have access to this, we don't have these resources. And my teammate, Victoria Anthony goes, Mike, you're not selling it. And he goes, no, I just want to be honest. Like she's got to know what she's getting into. So, and I love that right away. I'm like, well, I want a coach that's honest. I want a program that, you know, they just, they're honest and upfront with me. And maybe they don't, we don't need all these things to succeed. So it, it was a perfect fit for me. Um, but he'll, he'll tell athletes, Hey, you'd be a better fit at this school. You might not be the best fit here. So um, I, I would say, look, instead of looking for what they're looking for, think also about what you're looking for. Great, awesome. great advice. Terry, you got anything you want to add to that? Yeah, and, and I just think, you know, I mean, what coaches are looking for is, is honesty, right? They, they want truth in an athlete, someone that's coming in and, and just being very honest with who they are and, and what they want out of the experience, right? Because you can say that everyone wants to be the national champion or everyone wants to be, you know, uh, the, the Olympian or the snap, but but truly, do they? Do they really want to do the right things to do that? And do they want to live the lifestyle? And are they willing to go through the pain and the sacrifice and and the discipline and the structure of that? Right. And and I think so. I guess to to boil it down into a few words, I mean, you know, coaches are looking for a, a focused person, someone that's a uh, knows what they want, right? Someone that is a self-starter, that they don't have to get up and get moving every day. They want to know that this person has their own aspirations and they're not the aspirations of their mother or father, but their aspirations of the, themselves and, and, and what they want. And But they, they also want someone that's willing to go through those obstacles and go through the daily regimen and, and live the lifestyle of it because there's a price to it, right? Make no mistake about it. Helen is an Olympic champion today because she paid a price for that, right? And there's a price for success, right? And, and there's gonna be a price for, you know, for that, the success you want in college, whether it's on the mat or off the mat, right? But um, coaches are gonna wanna see that, that you are willing to live that lifestyle, right? And, and you're going to, you know, in the long term, you're going to look back at it and look at it, or hopefully beforehand, look at it like you're going to pay the price somewhere for success, right? You're going to pay the price on the front end, or you're going to be making deposits every day for that success, or you're going to pay the price on the back end looking back with regret because you didn't do the right things. You didn't make the right decisions. You didn't live the right lifestyle. And then you have the rest of your life to think about it. And, and so... So somewhere along the line in this spectrum of life, right, you've got to pay the price for things that aren't normal. Being an Olympic champion is, an Olympic champion is not a normal thing, right? That's why not everyone has a gold medal around their neck, right? It's, it's, it's something that's very coveted and very few people are willing to, to do that, right? And it's not saying that everyone that tries and everyone that, you know, if you do all the right things, it's going to happen. There's no guarantees here like we've talked about. But you have to be willing to go through that kind of a lifestyle and make those sacrifices um, or else it's probably unlikely that, that those things are attainable. So, so a, a college coach, any coach, is looking for the athlete that is, is willing to live live the lifestyle and just be straightforward, truthful, and honest with, with that assessment of what they want. Great answer, Terry. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, Frank, I think we got time for maybe one more. We're cutting time close. So Frank, yeah. you got one more for us? Wrap yeah, it up. And uh, just to make a little plug here, I was kind of talking to, uh, to Scott earlier in the chat about this. Um, you know, Terry, you talked about that very same thing about paying the price. Um, you talked about that last week, I think with, uh, with Tom Ryan. So on our website, teamusaenergy.com, we're building a membership area to where um, people will be able to go in and, and watch all of those previous webinars that we've done. Um, but that right there remind me, I want to make sure we, we plug that too. Um, all right. So Helen, you are, um, you're getting into the coaching realm 
and you were talking the other day about how it's a different animal. Um, so question from Ryan was, um, he's in the beginning stages of starting a female wrestling club um, in Long Island. Okay, so as a female competitor, do you have any advice on um, what you would look for in a club coach um, if you were possibly new to the sport or what you would look for in a club coach, period? Uh, well, here's the interesting thing. Most kids are not given, I don't, or, or really have an idea of what they're looking for in a club coach. And, and I think it would be better if we did even, even parents, you know, kids join wrestling, maybe their parents have never wrestled before. Um, so, you know, there, I, I wish there were more resources on, on what to look for, but I can speak to from experiences of with coaches I've worked with and um, you know, what I, I find is, you know, you, like Terry said, you know, you, you want somebody that's, that's honest and, um, you know, someone that, that knows wrestling, but also that cares to, uh, you know, I, I think it cares to run a good, I, cares to run a good program. And I would just say this part, I think would be better for Terry to answer because for me personally, one thing that helps is when, you know, coach takes time to know me individually, but that's different when you're on a national team, as opposed to like, when you're in a kids club and there's a bunch of kids and maybe some kids aren't consistently going all the time. So there's a whole bunch of, var of variables, but um, you know, I think coaches that care about the kid more than the sport, more than winning, um, they care about developing the kid's character. I think that's really important. And yeah, that's kind of all I have. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, before you get off of that, uh, uh, coaching men and women, Terry, before you would answer, tie that in and should you coach, uh, should you acknowledge differences when training? So I love quote and I just, um, so I love this quote. It says, um, you know, uh, equality is not synonymous with sameness. What's more important, the lock or the key? And I would say with, with coaching, the way that I would apply that with coaching men and women is that the reality is there are differences. And there are times where I think you just need to treat wrestlers as wrestlers. Like, um, you know, just, I can learn moves the same way a guy can. However, uh, my flexibility is different. And there's some things that maybe work better for guys that don't work for me or, or vice versa. So, um, you know, I, this again, is something Terry has more experience with, but as a girl growing up, uh, most of the times I just wanted to be treated like a wrestler. And I think coaches should just coach to when you're speaking, just talk as if you're talking to a bunch of wrestlers. There's no gender. However, recognize there are differences between um, girls and guys. And um, I don't know. I, I think Terry can speak more on that. Oh, fantastic answer. Okay. Yeah. And I, I would just follow up by saying, you know, I think every every parent wants the same same thing when they, well, maybe not, but hopefully they want the same thing when they put their kid into a sport, right? They, they want a lot more than medals and trophies in the in the kids' room, right? I mean, they they want they want to see this person develop into a strong, independent, uh, tough human being that can handle obstacles, right? And and that can go through life um, with a with a good good healthy mindset and good healthy uh, stance on who they are as a person, right? And and uh, I think a grassroots level coach, a development coach is that person, right? That person may be the most important coach you're ever going to have is the grassroots level coach. They're the ones that are going to instill the passion in, in, in your son or daughter. They're going to, you know, instill confidence in them by, by treating them right and talking to them the right way. But they're going to have a lot broader vision of, of the sport than just the wrestling mat and, and the, end of the day at the competitions. They're gonna be looking long-term on how is this person developing? Are they being honest with themselves? Are they doing the right things? Are they making the right decisions? And they're gonna hold that your, your child accountable to that, right? And that's, that's what you want from uh, any coach. Um, but, I, but I do think that the grassroots level coach, the club coach, I was very fortunate to have a a coach uh, at the club level when, when I was beginning, when my brother and I were beginning in this journey. Um, and really that, that person, I give all the credit in the world to instilling the passion and the desire within this sport, for this sport and, and really teaching life lessons 
from the hard knocks that you get from the sport because you will get hard knocks right but that's exactly what you want you don't want you don't want a smooth journey you want some rough waters in there you want your your child to go through these times while you have a person in front of them that is going to pick them up stand them up and teach them how to deal with those adversities in the right manner right and and so then you've gotten everything you wanted from that coach you know the, the coach can give time and attention right that's what they can give give to someone is time attention and knowledge those three things and, and outside of that um you know really if they're doing that that you know that person cares uh and and that's really what you want to look at it's it's not about championships if they're looking for medals and championships within the first month first two months you know uh, go down the road find someone else because it's not about that and um so that would be the first thing the second part of the question was uh the difference between coach and uh male and female and that's that's really uh a whole nother uh day right we could talk for days on that you know um there's a, there's differences there's a lot of similarities but but there are definitely differences to it and and you know i'm i'm no expert at it right I, uh i've i've well, you've only been doing it for he's pretty close Right. He's the closest uh, expert we have. I would say he's an expert. Yeah, but I've, I've had a lot of... Coach, you got time. <laughs> I've had, a, you know, some, some athletes I've been around and, and they've had a lot of, you know, I've learned from, from failing, right? I've, I've had some failures in this too and struggled through it. And, and I hope I am a lot better coach right now than I was 18 years ago. Other, otherwise, uh, you know, something's wrong. You know, I haven't looked at it r the right way, but... Um, but there, there's differences. But, the, you know, for the most part, wrestling is wrestling and teaching is teaching and motivating is motivating and educating is educating, right? And, and, um, but, but there's differences in how you treat uh, a male and a female, right? And, and, and the things that, that, that will help or hinder them in their development along the way. But, but I think that, you know, you don't have to have all the answers. I didn't have all the answers when I started. I still don't have all the answers. Yeah, but you have to be true and you have to be honest, right? And and I think that's that's the biggest thing. Is you don't always have to be right, but you have to be real, right? You have to be real along the way. So um, I think if, if you keep that in perspective and, you know, we can maybe on one of these webinars at some point, we can talk about the differences between coaching male and female because um, that's, a, that's a whole different discussion. But, um, but um, you know, I, I will say that uh, coaching females you know, has been very rewarding, right? I think that that females show their emotion a lot more, and 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 will show their appreciation a lot more, right? Than than maybe a guy would, but but um, but if, yeah, uh, it's it's well, great dealing with kids. Well, Terry, you're talking about maybe another time on one of these webinars we can talk about the differences. I don't know yep. of a better time to do that than let's have the women's national team coach and the men's national team coach. Oh, wait, that's, that's next week. That's, that's next week, week, baby. That's next <laughs> week. So um, anyway, before we wrap this up real quick, um, one of the things that on the registration um, that we've been promoting is uh, when you register, you get an opportunity to win um, free apparel, uh, USA Wrestling Apparel. So we have the first three weeks. we got the winners here. Let's go ahead. Let's get them announced. Um, for the first one that happened April 16th, that was, uh, that was Terry's headline webinar. Um, that winner is Sarah Butler. Okay, so on the 23rd, when we had uh, Coleman Scott be a guest appearance, uh, that winner is Brian Tomlinson. And the 30th with Tom Ryan, um, that is Elisa Schultz. So we will get with those three individuals, um, we'll get all the details worked out and get that apparel to you. So congratulations to you guys. Um, Hey, it was a great webinar tonight. Helen, I really, really appreciate not only your time, but the insight. Insight was outstanding. Perspective was phenomenal. So, we, you know, we, we couldn't have asked for a better champ to be on tonight. Yeah. So, yeah. fantastic. Remember, next week is Bill Zadick. The following Thursday, Ben Askren. But, Helen, really, really appreciate you being here. Like I said before, we couldn't have a finer champion. There's never going to be another first gold Olympic gold medalist for women. And 
I am really proud of the champion you are. And uh, you don't need medals to be that champion. You were a champion well before that, but it was just nice to have that, uh, that title. Coach Steiner, as always, uh, great job, great insight. Uh, I, I just, uh, a lot of good information, and I hope uh, the folks out there know just how much, uh, how much good information that was. So hopefully, Helen, we can have you back sometime later. Uh, if you want to come back, door's always open. But any closing remarks, I just want to say thank you. Frank, great job with the questions and uh, running the show. So thanks. Great job. Good work, Alex. Yeah, thank you, Helen. Yeah. yeah, just fun fact. Coach Gandhi was my junior world team coach from when I was, what, 14, 15? And Terry, I think I've known since I was, like, 13. So they've seen me grow throughout the years and they've poured a lot into me throughout the years so uh one of the best parts about sport is the the relationships that you get along the way and i've been very blessed by that so thank you guys so. yeah. thank you Helen. thank you good yeah well done yeah so nice job i i think that uh, uh helen did a great job she she really did she uh she's got a lot to say terry terry did a nice job again um i'm excited to have bill uh i i think you're going to well I've had the opportunity to see Bill work for quite a few years now because he was an assistant when I started mm -hmm. uh, working with Terry. The champion, the, the type of champion that he's created, you know, I think a lot has to do with Coach Burnett. You know, he was a he really set the tone. Uh, I know Bill's parents and brother ha have a lot to do with the person that he is. Uh, I think it's going to be a great, uh, I, I just think it's going to be a great conversation. He's just a super person. We can't let him tell one of his stupid jokes, though. He catches me every time. He <laughs> He says, he told me the stupid bear one. He's talking, oh my gosh, and I was out bear hunting and, 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 and he's going, he's going, and the bear climbing the tree, you know, and, and he gets to the end and he's got me wrapped right in. It's like, he's like, he goes, you know, and, and then he's climbing the tree and, and I, I, I didn't want to shoot him right out of the tree. It was me. And he, and he reaches up and he grabs my boot and he starts pulling on my leg and he says, this is just like what I'm doing to you. <laughs> It was a 15 minute story, okay? <laughs> Jag off. <laughs> no, it was, but that's, that's who he is. He just, 15 minutes, I sat there with, because I'm a hunter. I mean, I like that. And right, I'm, and you're just oh, in I'm it. I'm there, I'm in it, I'm in it, I'm in it. And he's oh like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? And then he says, yeah, and he started pulling on my leg, just like I'm doing to you. <laughs> Did, uh, uh, you're not a big Facebook guy, so you probably didn't see it. But Jay Emma, did you see the uh, the video he posted the other day? His magic trick? No. Oh, uh, so I'm obviously not a magician, and he's he's world class, I tell you. So <laughs> he, he's got his he's got his his deck here, right? and he's shuffling, he's shuffling, and you know he's telling his story. And here's the deal, man. Like I, I'm gonna make whatever cards you want. Now this is Facebook here, so no matter how many people are on here, this trick's still gonna work, right? How could that be? So he's shuffling, he's telling his story, talking about his dog or something, I don't know. And you look down, and again, it's like five minutes into this thing. You're like, well, I can't stop now. I got to see the trick. <laughs> he's like, all right, so pick your card. Whatever card you want, pick, you know, boo -boo, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right, pick. What do you want? You got the card? All right, right here. Boom. Isn't it magic? I made your card turn into that. <laughs> 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 what? 
<laughs> yeah. What is that? Oh, no, that's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's my new next joke. Okay, that's my new. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be ready for Bill Zadick because he's probably going to try that one. Exactly. It's probably I mean, 37 videos in now on, on Jay's page, but yeah, look it up. It was good. He was good. I mean, he did. He had you right there and, and, and he just pulled up and like, boom. He's like, okay. Yeah. Now what? What? <laughs> I made your card turn to that. Oh. But, There's 17 minutes of my life I can't get back here and he got me. <laughs> right, but you've always said it four times to four different people. So right. it, was worth it. it was worth it. No. Right. So uh, um, we'll talk to Terry. Uh, we'll work on uh, the next itinerary. Um, yeah. And uh, no, I thought I, th I I thought that Helen did a terrific job. She's uh, she's a champion of champions. I mean, she she uh, was everything. It was good. Good for her. Yeah. No. It, when you know when someone of that level pulls back and then it's not about me winning you know and just give a, a different perspective rather than just work harder than everyone else and oh no yeah that's that's uh that's why i was excited when she said she could make it because yeah. because uh you know the junior worlds were not nice to her as far as you know when she lost if i'm not mistaken when we were at budapest she lost to no that was from the girl from tunisia uh she lost to the japanese girl in in uh romania she lost to the japanese girl in istanbul or uh turkey uh, ankara and she lost to the Tunisia girl, and but she was she was just coming through, ready to burst onto the scene, and she's so good, so but her confidence, and that's why I'm glad she talked openly about her confidence, because that's all that girl lacked forever, and as good as she was, she just she just couldn't convince herself of that. So it's it's important. It's good stuff. I mean, it's it's real. And uh, there it is. There's the word. Yeah. It's so real. So it's good. But I'm excited to have uh, Coach Zadik on. He's the real deal, buddy. He's the real deal. He just uh, he brings a he brings something great to the table. Yeah. Which who he is, you know, and he, I don't think we've ever had collectively as many great winners. See, I say, you know, place finishers, you get a medal around your neck. That's one thing. These guys are winners. That Jaden Cox, and yeah. it came from more than just Coach Zadick, but Coach Zadick has embraced Jaden, Jordan, and again, Coach Burnett has a lot to do with this, but uh, those guys, Kyle Snyder, Nick Wisdowski, those guys are true champions. Their character is unbelievable. They're it's flawless. You know, uh, I know David Taylor, but I, I don't know him like, I mean, I know Kyle Dake. I went to college with his dad. Uh, and Kyle is a, a beast. But I, I go with the character side of when Kyle Snyder lost and someone right. asked a question about defining and just, that was a wrestling match. That doesn't define me as a person. Okay? And the way he is, the character he has, the high level of character, I just, I couldn't be more proud. And, you know, I've been on a few trips with them 
you know, Spain in particular, and I watched them just beat the tar out of everybody. And, but they were just gracious winners and gracious losers. It was about the, the training and the battle. And it was just a pleasure to see. And I, I just think uh, that, that Coach Burnett and now Coach, uh, Coach Zadick, they just, they promote it. They encourage it. And, and because of that, they have results from both aspects. And so I'm excited. I, I don't, we'll get together later this week, Coach. Yep. Yep. I think the, I think that'll be fantastic. You know, looking, I think there's, uh, well, Helen's obviously the first athlete um, that we've had on. And then looking, the rest of them are non-competitive anymore. So I think we, you know, don't get me wrong. I am ecstatic for the next three, but I, I think it'll be good to get, get at least another or some more athletes you know, senior level athletes on their world teamers and, um, you know, get that active participation take on it too. Um, sure. So sure. no, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, pretty exciting. Pretty exciting yeah. for sure. Okay. So, all right. If you get a chance. Can I get a list of the, the people that got on as uh mm -hmm. If there's some people that I know, like from Canada or from the uh, area, California, from my old wrestlers, uh, I wouldn't mind reaching out to them and in, in, uh, chatting. So yeah, okay. Yeah, no, we can uh, we can get that. I got to okay. get Terry's or get the recording out of Terry's account anyway. So okay, fantastic. We'll Great job, Frank. Thanks a bunch. Uh, look forward to it again next week. Yep, you're the man. All right, All right. We'll, we'll talk soon. All right, see you, buddy.